Hello guys and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how I do setups in ACC. For, if you like this kind of content, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for plenty new videos or more videos. The first step which we have to do is, even before we going on track, we have to decide which car we use and on which track we want to do a setup. In this case, I've choose I've chosen the Lamborghini around Brands Hatch. So we start a session. The first thing which we do is loading the setup. The setup which we are loading is the aggressive one because it's already a decent setup and you can good and you can do good times with it. So we load the setup, go out on track and try to memorize the pre hot pressure after two or three laps. Then we go back to the pits, adjust the PSI value to, this, to the point where we get the PSI hot value around 28 PSI. So you drive again out of the out of the box and look how the pressures behave if they're hitting 27.8, 27.9 you're correct and we can just focus now on improving our lap times and getting to know the track. If we're at the point where we can't improve ourselves, we know that we can now start up with the setup changes. The first thing which I do is I go to the arrow area and I look which kind of track we are racing. So Brands Hatch is a very medium to high downforce track, so I already know the rear wing should not be so low as possible, so I like to stick around between 8 to 11 rear wing on medium to high downforce tracks and after trying every rear wing out we get to a point where we know or we have one value where we are especially good with so in this case maybe or it was for me like 11 wing and I felt quite comfortable with that. The problem now is if we just increase the rear wing value and not also the right height, we maybe get too much understeer because we have too much arrow on the back. The correction which I then do is I increase the right height by one or two millimeters, then I go out again, look if the car is still understeery or if it has the correct balance. So what we will do is now we will drive out, increase the right height value at the rear by one millimeter, then look if the car is still on the steering. If yes, we again drive out, and before we drive out, we increase the right height value by one millimeter, and it goes on and on and on like this if we get to the point where the car has the best balance. Another tip for me, which I often do, is I try to lower the right height to the, at the front to the minimum as possible just to get the uh, point where the um, center of mass is as low as possible. If we focus now on the brake ducts, it's very easy to set them up. You just have to look how your tires behave and if they're overheating and if your brakes are also overheating in some part of the corners. A good way to set up the brake ducts is that during a race you want them to be kind of li uh, or have a light blue color on the straight so you know they're a little bit cooling and so if you want to open the brake ducts you just increase the rear value and if you want to close them you just decrease the value. Another advice for me for qualifying or hot lap setups you don't need the, break, uh, the brakes to be cooled on a straight you want the optimum brake performance so the, the thing that you want to do is you lower the brake ducts to the point where the brakes have almost the optimal temperature around the track. You will recognize this if the color of the brakes are almost everywhere just green and maybe in some parts of the track a little bit yellow or something like that. But that's not a problem because you only drive like two or three push laps in the quali session so it's not important if you're tires will be messed up. So after we set up the error part of the setup, we can move to the electronic part because normally which I do is I drive around one to three traction control and 
ABS also between 2 and 3. Disclaimer, this setup is for dry conditions, so it's obvious that if you drive in wet conditions you may increase the traction control to 5 or the ABS also to 6 or 7 or 8. The EQ map in the Lamborghini is, I mean, always one is the way to go because you lose too much time on the EQ map 2 or 3 compared to the one telemetry lapse will be used for later when we set up the dampers. But for now, we're going to the mechanical part. And the first thing which we try to do is focusing on the brake points to set up the brake bias. If we feel too much understeer during braking, we can decrease the brake bias easily up until the point where we start losing rear grip while trail braking. That's an indicator that the brake bias is too low. So we increase the value again to get the optimum value. After that, we are focusing on the wheel rate. My procedure, which I do is I focus only on, first of all, on the front part and then on the rear part of the suspension. So the first thing which I do is I lower the wheel rate value at the front to the minimum and I drive out, make notes if the car is behaving properly, if it's better, if I have more mid-turn grip, stuff like that. After that, I go in the box again, then I in increase the wheel rate at the front by two clicks, go out again, make notes, then again back to the pits, repeat the same, and if all the three wheelers which we tested now out are horribly bad or just worse feeling on the track, we try also the two values which were over jumped out. So the last value in this case 212 kilonewton per meter and 144 kilonewton per meter. Another advice from me is that the wheel rate is influencing the midterm behavior drastically more than the turn in and turn exit behavior. So especially while setting up the wheel rate, just keep an eye mostly on the midterm behavior. If we now have the best feeling at a certain value on the track, and maybe it's also showing it by lap times that your lap times are faster. Let's just assume that 167 kilonewton per meter by the way to go. We now focus on the rear wheel rate. We do the same procedure, lowering the wheel rate to the minimum, drive out, make notes, again increasing by two, make notes, again by two, and then if every value at the rear which we tested out feels not good, we also try the values which were over jumped out. So in this case, I think it was 191 kilonewton per meter and 136 kilonewton per meter. If we're happy with the midterm behavior of the car, which we've set up with the wheel rate, we now try to balance the entry and exit behavior of the car with the entry roll bars. So if we have trouble on while braking that the car rolls too much, I like to increase the entry roll bar. And the same at the front entry roll bar. If we don't like the uh, exit behavior of the car that it has maybe too much, too less grip, too less traction, we also can increase the entry roll bar. On the other hand, if we feel like we have too much understeer, we can decrease the entry roll bar at the front. The values which are not covered are bump stop rate and bump stop range at the front and at the rear. The reason for that is that normally I don't change them very often because they're already quite good set up by the developers from ACC in the aggressive preset, but some indicators for changing them is like bottoming out in, a, in Red Leon or something like that, where you have to lower the bump stop range at the rear just to get the car more consistently through the Red Leon. The last two values which we are not discussed are a steer ratio and preload differential. Normally I use a steer ratio from 11. It's like the car is also darty, but you can also turn a little bit much more than maybe the optimal slip angle of the tire is. But if you're like a person who is steering way too way too less you can try to decrease the steer ratio to get the car even more darty and the car will be even more reactive the last value which we now discuss on mechanical grip is preload differential so the thing with this is if you have like if i have trouble while um accelerating in low speed corners i like to tweak it down to like 100 or even 60 newton meters but if i have trouble with stability during high speed corners and low speed is fine, I like to increase it. So it depends on the car behavior in general and how do you like the car to be. Now we're focusing on the damper part in ACC. For me, Motec is very, very strong help to setting them up. Motec is like a telemetry tool which you can download. There are many videos on YouTube how to do it. 
so just maybe search for it and download it now you see the perfect uh, like distribution of the damper where the damper works for me i like to have these these shapes they fit my driving style very well and like i said i set them up with motec the values which you see in the setup so the question is how do i do it first of all when we want to set up the dampers with motec the first thing which we have to do is we go to the setup and go to electronics and increase the telemetry labs. By this we uh, make sure that ACC will store the telemetry labs which we did on the track. So when we do some labs on the track we can go in MoTeC and load the file. After loading the file we can go to the suspension histogram and we'll see the distribution of which part of the damper is working so low speed and high speed as i said i like the behavior of the car is for me very good if this distribution looks like the gauss distribution that means that the highest point of the graph should be in the center from from there the curve should flatten in both directions and it should be symmetrical so as i showed you the front is a perfect example how it should look just remember that these are only my personal experiences and maybe you also could set up the car with the skew on the left or on the right side so it's just personal preference but for me this works the best the problem is normally if you load the setup or if you load the motec file and you have your distribution where the damper works in slow and fast sections it doesn't look like perfect as this this is because we have to change the values at the damper settings to get this kind of shape of the graph or of the distribution. I can show you a distribution where you see that it does not look as good as now. Bad example for me, which I can show you, is normally we start with a shape like this one, where where the bump, for example, at the right front works too much. So in this case, we try to lower the bump value at the right uh, or at the front in general to get the percentage at the top which you can see here equal and normally then the shape should also be looking like this shape in Brent's Hatch which looks way better than this one for me. So after setting up the dampers we go to the last section which we have not covered and this is the tire section. So generally I try to get the toe as near as zero because this value will give you more top speed and more mid-turn grip. Nevertheless if I struggle still with turn in I increase the negative amount of toe in the front and normally I never use positive toe at the front in the dry. If we now focus on the rear toe I have the same approach at the back. I decrease the positive amount of the toe out until to the point where the car starts to get unstable. So talking about camber my approach is, is the following. First of all I have pro if I have problems with lateral grip in corners I increase the negative camber on the front and the rear. At the same time I'm careful to not overdo it because too high camber will cause high temperature will, which leads also to a higher tire degradation. Another negative point of too high camber is that the rear will give you less traction at the turn exit which has a negative effect especially during the race. So the last value which we have to cover in, in the tire section is the caster. So normally I use the value of the caster in the pre-setup. However, if you think that you are someone who is very precise and with the wheel and you don't steer so much, you can lower it. And on the other hand, if you are someone who likes to turn in too much or overdrive the car by turning way too much, you can increase the caster. I hope this video will help you setting up your car in the future and see you soon in the next video. Bye.